What's up guys, Eric here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you to make these super cool decorative tiles using your Silhouette Cameo, Silhouette Studio, and Heat Transfer Vinyl. So we'll start by creating our design, and as you can see on the um, image of the Silhouette cutting mat, I've already got my design created. It's basically two pieces that I've put together, uh, and I've caught, put off to the side here the two pieces. One basically is just an R for, in this case, an R, uh, and the font that I'm using is Regal Font. And what I did was I made this R big enough to ensure that it would fit inside the tile. And I know that my tile is four and a quarter by four and a quarter inches square. So right now the image of this is 3.8 inches wide by 3.2 inches high. And I know that will fit in. And I, don't, I didn't go to the full four, although I, I suppose I could if I really wanted to. Um, but I'm just giving myself a little extra margin of error for um, having a little bit of extra space. The other part that I put in was the name, and I just did a different font, something that I thought looked neat. And basically what I did was I put the two together, just like this. And what you can do is you can highlight and select both, two, both of the items together and then use your alignment tool to center the two together. And then I just manually tweaked the... Um, the name inside the space of the split font by using my arrow keys once I select the item itself. And once I've got it set the way I want it to, and it may be helpful to zoom in so you can see how close your items are together, um, is how I created that, how I created this particular item here. And so um, I've got my item here. I'm confirming that my, my width is 3.8 inches. In fact, I'll go ahead and change it to 3.9 inches wide. Uh, I could probably do four, but I do know that um, there's a slight curvature towards the edges. So um, I'll go ahead and do four inches wide. And there we go. All right. Um, and so what I've done is put the two images together. I grouped them and I'm going to go ahead and weld. So in case there's any parts that are overlapping, it becomes one image together. You can see there's multiple images now after welding it because it's basically created a compound path and sort of separated all these separate items here. So now I'm going to regroup everything so it's one singular image and it moves up on its own without individual parts and pieces. I placed this on the um, on the image of the cutting mat where I'm going to have my vinyl loaded on my physical cutting mat. And since this is going to be heat transfer vinyl, I'm going to go ahead and mirror it uh, so that's backwards because when you cut heat transfer vinyl you cut it backwards so that when you iron it or heat it onto the substrate that you're going to put it onto in this case a tile um, it is right side uh, or facing the correct side up okay so once you have that ready to go what you'll go to next is your send function um, and then select it mine always defaults to cut edge i don't know if anybody else's does but mine does so i always go back to cut um, and that basically makes sure that I cut the outside lines and nothing in between. Now I am using a vinyl, a heat transfer vinyl, uh, by the brand called Vivid, and I'm using their V2 Pro series, specifically Hyper Glitter. It's a really, really thick vinyl, very, very glittery. Um, it looks really nice. Um, I have found that it works great for putting on objects that you're not going to wear uh, often or have a lot of movement in it because it eventually does break off but it looks beautiful when it's applied um, and if you put it on things like a tile where you're not really going to touch it it looks great and won't ever break down anyway after much trial and error I found the settings that I need for this which is a depth of four again this is a pretty thick vinyl uh, a force of 20 and a speed of five I've created my own um, to save those settings I created my own cut settings for that and then I also want to make sure that I'm on the cut function and I'll be using my auto blade. The last thing that I want to check before actually sending this to my Cameo cutting machine, I'm using a Silhouette Cameo 3 in this case, is to ensure that the machine is ready. Um, and I do that by seeing that it is ready. I'm hooked up on Bluetooth, but you can also hook it up hardwire as well. And then once you are ready to go, all you got to do is hit send and then let your cutting machine do its thing after you've loaded up your cutting machine mat with the vinyl on it as well, ensuring that you place the vinyl in the place where you want it to actually cut. Um, if you didn't mirror this, or if you forget, when you hit send for heat transfer vinyl, it might ask you send as is or send as mirrored. 
If you already went ahead and flipped the image, then you can just send it as is. If you haven't flipped the image and you send as mirrored, not only will it cut mirrored, but it's, if you had this on a left, the image on a left place, it will actually cut on the right over here. So you'll want to make sure that you place your vinyl on your mat appropriately. I've learned this the hard way, uh, and that's how I know. Well, once you've got all that set, go ahead and hit it send and let your machine do its thing. So my cutting machine has finished cutting the vinyl. And the next step is to go ahead and weed out the excess material. Um, I prefer into using uh, as my tool for weeding a, an X-Acto knife. A um, couple reasons, got a nice sharp point so I can poke into the vinyl and, and pull and lift it up. But two, if I need to cut vinyl away, I've got a blade already in hand. So what I like to do is just, I'll find a corner um, and try to peel it up. As you can see, I'm just using the tip of my blade and then once I poke through, I can twist it and start pulling it, pulling the HTV, um, and then go from there. Now again, it's nice having a blade because then I can cut here, and that way I'm not pulling this up while I'm trying to get inside some of this intricate detail here. So speaking of intricate detail, um, even though this is a very thick vinyl, um, it does cut very nicely. These are some pretty fine details here for a thick vinyl. Um, it does cut very nicely and cleanly through once you've found the correct settings for it. The one thing that I have noticed is that when you peel it, so as you're weeding this, this carrier sheet is extremely sticky. So when you're peeling this, just be careful because you put your, your hand down on it while you're trying to peel. It's a little bit more sticky than what you might be used to, say, if, if you're using, for example, a sizer. Um, and it just sticks to you and it kind of binds up on you and just makes things a little bit more interesting as far as trying to weed this out. And so using a blade, I also like to make just additional cuts so that I'm not peeling off too much all at one time. And I just look at where the cut lines are in the image itself. And then I can make a cut without cutting all the way through. And then that way I'm only peeling a smaller section. Um, instead of a very large one that can cause issues with vinyl getting all over each other or with vinyl sticking back down onto the carrier sheet and causing binding problems, uh, those types of things. Uh, you might have heard the cliche phrase, take things in small bites or small chunks at a time, and that's kind of the concept uh, with that. So I'm going to go ahead and continue weeding. Um, this uh, this uh, decal out, and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, so I've finished weeding all the excess off, and so this is what the graphic looks like once it's been fully weeded. All right, so let's go ahead and get this onto the tile. Now, here I have a basic plain white glazed ceramic tile. It's got a nice smooth glossy surface to it because of the glazing. Um, bought this at Menards, I believe. Uh, 100 pack was, I think, $17, something super cheap. Um, anyway, you can get them at your local hardware store, order them online, etc., etc. Anyway, um, prepare this by cleaning off the top with a, I used it just an alcohol and water solution, 70% alcohol, 30% water uh, to clean off any dirt, dirt, oils, or residues that might still be on there. Um, the next step then is to place your image that you're going to press onto the tile, onto the tile. I am just eyeballing this. Um, you could measure it out if you wanted to to make sure that this gap here and this top gap is the same and the left right gap is the same. I'm just eyeballing it. Um, now remember this carry sheet is super sticky. So it will stick down pretty well, nice and tightly. But you can pick it back up if you see that you need to adjust it, which I think I do because the gap I can see right there on the top is much larger than the bottom and that's mostly because I'm looking at this from an angle. My left to right or side to side seemed to be pretty even and I was okay with that. And then as far as leveling it, meaning that the straight lines are level to this, seems to be okay as well. 
place like that. Smooth it down. So this is what it's looking like there. Looks like I'm still a little bit high, so I'm going to pick it up one more time. And then just eyeball adjust it. Another trick you could do, knowing that knowing that the height of this is about three and a third inches, and then knowing the width or the height of this tile is four and a, a quarter inches, you could do the math and subtract the difference out and make sure that whatever that is in pre-mark on there. All right, so this is what it looks like as it's ready for pressing. All right, looks like we're ready to go to get this on the press. And I'll be using a heat press to put this down. Uh, and I'll be using a Heat Press Nation Black Series 15 by 15 clamshell. Okay, so I've got my tile and my uh, graphic on the tile centered on my heat press. I'm going to be using a clamshell heat press. And so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to close it down for about five seconds. Lift it up, turn this, close it for five seconds, turn it and turn it until I hit all four sides. The reason being is because the clamshell puts down like this. Um, and so there's going to be more pressure on this side than there will be on this side. So to make sure I have even pressure and I'm laying down all the sides uh, properly and equally, I'm going to do about five seconds on each, each of the four sides here. So when I check the Vivid website as far as temperature to use, it recommends 320 degrees Fahrenheit. And then if you're pressing this on a shirt or some sort of fabric that will be able to press all the way flat without stopping your, your uh, heat press on one half of the tile, uh, anywhere from 7 to 15 seconds. Um, and then additional 10 seconds if it did not take. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I've got my t heat press warmed up to 320 degrees right now. And so I'm going to go ahead and press it down for 5 seconds. One two, three, four, five, lift it up, careful because it could be hot, or will be hot, one, two, three, four, five, check again, press it down, one, two, three, four, five, lift it up, so down, one, two, three, four, five. All right. And so on the Vivid website, as far as instructions goes for this, it says that this is a hot or cold peel. I'm going to let it cool just for a little bit here. I'm going to turn off my heat press. And actually, it's still a little warm. So I'm going to go ahead and see if it's going to take. So I'm peeling it off slowly and carefully. Looks like part of that didn't didn't uh, set all the way. So I'm going to redo that for another five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Give it a second here to cool down a little bit. Let that glue set after heating it down. All right. Let's see if that'll take now. Nope, looks like some of the lettering right here is a little bit loose still, so I'm going to turn it this way, press that down some more. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then. Some of the lettering right here was still a little bit loose, so I'm going to give that some more heat. I'm giving it some heat, but I'm not really pressing down too hard because I don't want to uh, smash the vinyl, if you will, and basically smear it or smush it down too much. Uh, as I've learned, if you add too much pressure, it can, it can tend to do that. Uh, basically because you've got a hard, flat surface on the upper part of your... Um, heating element and then the tile itself is a hard lower surface and so the vinyl in between which is now soft because it's extra soft because it's hot and starting to sort of melt because of the heat can smush down um, and kind of just look really goopy. All right let's see if those additional presses and he or heating helped. 
It's looking like it did. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn my machine off. So I left it on the first time. All right. That tile is a little hot. <laughs> All right, guys. So here we go. This is um, the tile with HTV pressed onto it. All right, guys. And so this is the finished product. As you can see, it turned out pretty well. Um, again, we used Vivid V2 Pro series heat transfer vinyl, their hyper glitter series, a basic white ceramic glazed tile, uh, and a silhouette cameo to cut the, the HTV and silhouette studio, and I was using designer edition. So you can give this as decorative tile as is, or you can take it another step further and seal it in. You can probably use something like a urethane or acrylic seal, uh, maybe a couple uh, coats of clear coat. Um, but the other thing you can do is also coat it in epoxy resin to give it that nice glass-like, super thick depth look to it as well. So I hope you found this video to be helpful, um, informative, and maybe a little bit entertaining. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. Also, be sure to hit the notification bell button so that you get notifications whenever I post new content to the channel. Thanks a lot, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video and have a great day.